go, testing, testing. Right then, this is Sheila. I'm now on a Barrett Green walk. It's supposed to be, but if you want to do the whole thing, it's six miles, it's a circular walk and it brings you back this way. I don't know whether I do that, because I don't like, I get worried by, by weather. I do get worried by weather. And, uh, I didn't put my Mac in. It's too much to carry. I've got to carry everything with me as it is. And, uh, I've done part of this. I've just gone past a thistle field where you use a nice view of Borough Green, St. Augustine's Church. But I'm now following, um, a predetermined walk that's been organised and designed by the people. Right. So, when we get to this bridge, set off in the village, emerge to sit back on to... Emerge to see park alongside a hedge to left leading on downhill. Up this path to right. That's right. Follow this path and swing left a bit. Path inside a wood and soon on the road. Right, I'm now walking. I'm so there is some um, yellow arrows that I'm following. I'm got. A t I think it's probably up past two the time. So it takes three hours. Plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, I'd get back. Anyway, not to worry about rain or anything like that. This is Sheila out in the countryside, been surrounded by the fields of her ancestors. I've I picked some barley or whatever it is, wheat, I'm not sure what, what it is, um, the other day to bring back some fresh, so I'll keep the old, but um, if there's somewhere around here, my ancestors, the oaks had a wood. So if I'm going to come back that way, it looks like it, and all I've got to eat, chocolate biscuit in there. I've, got, I've definitely got biscuits. <coughs> I've definitely got cake. I've got cartons of orange and a whole bottle, of, small bottle of water. I don't feel hungry at all. And I do want to explore my ancestral land. <coughs> of course, I don't tend to walk very quick. So I don't know what speed they're basing it on six miles. <sighs> so this is Sheila, it, uh, as opposed to Somerset, this is Sheila's Suffolk Walk. I wanted to do one, it's a pity I couldn't video it. That'll keep for another time. I'm surrounded by yellow corn, or wheat, or whatever it is. I'm going for a walk, but it's, my bag is really heavy because I've got to carry my, uh, I've got water, juice, I've got to carry all my belongings really because um, you can't leave any, in, if, I mean it'd be terrible if someone left the car because I've got all those tape cassettes and, oh god, dozens of cameras, so you couldn't, you can't replace that, that would, that would be destroying, to be quite honest. I guess if I locked it then. Yeah, I must have done. Right then, I'm turning off now while I just keep a bit of tape. Um, I'm hoping... Well, I expect the church will be shut by the time I get back. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing as for going back to Somerset yet. 
term, I'm re I really am restricted to what I can do, apart from going for walks. Um, and it's going to cost me another £14 if I stay tomorrow night. So I'm really trying to weigh up whether I should go back tomorrow. So that saves me £14. In, you know, I can put that towards petrol. I've done an awful lot of stuff. I do feel exhausted. He said I didn't have to rush to get back. I mean, the only thing I wanted to do by getting back on the Sunday was to avoid all the people. Like, I've got a load on my stuff and that. Do you know what I mean? Um, where I live gets very busy at night. Lots of drunken people around. Um, but then if I did get back, unload somehow or other, go and park the car in a safer place, I could then um, possibly take Zara and Brandy out for a little drive, because I mean, I suppose Zara would like that really, but I don't know how she'd handle it. She'd have to sit in the back with Maggie. Make sure she don't scratch nothing. That's the only other problem we've got. So I presume I'm going the right way. I might not be going the right way, you know, after all that. Well, I am following a, um, a yellow arrow, but I thought I'd be walking closer to the woods somehow. Let me have a look again. So I'll bring the chain after right, won't it? Head down the field with the hedging up. Emerge to see a path alongside hedge to left, leading on downhill. Emerge to see a path alongside hedge to left. Ignore obvious path to right. Follow this path and swing left with it, passing side of wood and soon after emerge onto a road. Well, I'm going across another body far away. I'm not committed yet, but either way, 
after an hour and a half, roughly, I will be committed to going the whole hog. Like, for example, if, if I wanted to now, I, I think, oh, I'll turn back now. I don't want to. I want to actually do this circular walk. I've got time to do it. It doesn't get dark till 8 o'clock. It's six miles. So what I've got to imagine is, like, walking from my house in Barrow to King Alfred's and back again. That's six miles. So I'd have to walk all the way up the Borough Road, through town, up to the apex, and turn round and come back again. So this is Sheila, giving the feel of the ancestral footsteps trying to understand where I came from, where we came from, our roots. That's what I'm doing now. Right, I've just taken a nice picture of the wood with it, and in front of it, the corn, barley or wheat, whatever it is. That is in Burra Green, and that was the wood that belonged to me ancestors, we believe. Right, I've crossed over the road, like it says, and there's a sign pointing to Carlton. Half a mile. Then after I got to the end of this stretch, at the T-junction, the stream in front of you, turn sharp left with a stream on the right. And soon, and soon, cross stream on Newish footbridge. Right, well, we have to recover that first. Oh, so we're out, we really are exploring now. We've gone past the wood. And now, walking. I, mean, I, I haven't got a clue out how far... Let me have a look on the map again. There's actually a map as well. So it let me show me what stages I'm at when I get to Colton, which is half a mile. I'm going to have to turn the tape off in a minute. Cool. Yeah, once I get to Colton... Oh, then we go to Brinkley. I'm going to turn off for now. I'm not going to talk again yet. Until, unless anything significant happens. Or if I should... Um, what I should do now... I shall point out certain features, but I should just come in at the main points. Because this is my last tape. I don't know if I'll be able to get round. There's a big group of cows. Now, I met a group this morning that were very frisky, right? I mean, they could, there's a lot of them. There's 50 cows there. And what, what's happening? They're all staring at me and looking very threatening. And what they've done, they've walked up to the top of the hill where they know I've got a cross. And they're just standing there. And none of them are moving. And they're standing in a very threatening stance. Plus there's a baby calf with them. So... There's no way I am walking amongst those sort of animals because one is particularly staring at me to say you're not coming up here. And they're, they're sort of bull bullocky types. I mean, there's a farmer down in Somerset. See, that there's one here. He's coming right up to me now, this one. Go on, kill off. Go on. Yeah. Good on. But that one there, he's staring. Go on. Go. Up you go. Up you go. Up you go. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Clear off. And hopefully they'll go down the other side 
just in a minute, and one told him to move on. There's, they're, they're really protecting the car, but I'm stopping now for a minute. Right, it has started to rain, but I'm not too wet. I've got my umbrella. Um, I think I'm... It won't be long before I'm halfway. I might even be halfway round now. But I've, got, I've ended up at Carlton Church, where Thomas Oakes is leaning up against the wall. That's quite interesting, isn't it? I'm off to Brinkley next. I think once I get to Brinkley, although I've just passed it not far away, it isn't really far, it's just around the corner, isn't it? I think once I get to Brinkley, I know it ain't far then, but I don't really care if I get wet, really. My bag was open, though. Oh, I don't think I would have lost anything, because I haven't really got anything. Everything's in my pocket. That's, um... Yeah, so I'm back in Brinkley, right? So that's all I'm saying for now. It's raining. I'm en route. And I've said hello to Thomas and put a f borrowed a flower off somebody else to put on there, his, his stone. So this is St. Peter's Colton. Right, following on from Colton, where I went in the church and said hello to Thomas Oak, the brother of Edward Oak, my great 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 grandfather. Um, I then, following directions, went down the broad avenue of trees and uh, negotiated all, a bridge across a river, small little forward thing. Came out on the main road at a junction, had to look for a gap in a hedge. And then I'm now walking, as it says, between two paddocks up a pathway between two paddocks of horses <coughs> and in front of me you can see Brinkley Church I'm going to take a picture of it in a minute it's in the distance so I don't know if I see it or not anyways if I don't take a picture now it might I might not be able to get this view again right then I'll talk again in a minute when I get to the to Brinkley like I said earlier, by walking it, you can feel the distances that they that they would have had to have done to see each other from village to village. It's like where Thomas is. I bet there's even quicker routes. There's more than one path, I'm sure. This is a circular walk that I'm following. And so far, I'm on track. I thought I couldn't find the gap in the hedge at one point, but in the end, I found it. Um, trial and error. So, um, yeah, so I'm now having a different view of Brinkley Church from the sticks. And it's brilliant. I, 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 I'm carrying on, although there is a choice here. I don't like it when you get choices, because I could go that way, but I'm gonna head, I'm gonna head towards the church myself. Because one way or another, I'm coming out at Brinkley. Because there's, what they don't tell you is um, that, you know, you could go that way. I mean, how do I know if that's going to take me out to the hall or not? So I'm, I'm carrying on down this long stretch. It is quite a long stretch. But the rain stopped. There's a nice breeze, it's not baking hot. I feel I'm on the, not the very last lap, but um, either two thirds or three quarters round, because um, nearly, once I get it to Brinkley, I've then just got to do one more hike to get to Barrow Green. And I should end up on the field similar to when I went out, um, but coming back on the, the other side of that, that field. So, over and out for now. Yeah, I recognise where I am now. Where I usually park when I come to Brinkley, they've built a brand new playground, a wooden one. And I, um, Brinkley Church is right in front of me, with Brinkley Hall. That's good. But we're now on the home straight. I've quickly had a look over at the church and 
rounded up to the hall and then found the correct footpath. Right, that's the end. That's all my tapes, folks. This is Sheila in Suffolk signing off. Right, we're carrying on for a minute. That was me doing a Borough Green circular walk which included Colton Church and Brinkley where we have ancestors that lived there in the past. Um, it was the very first time I'd done that particular walk but I had visited Borough Green quite a few times over the years. The first ever visit was in 2005 with Zara and Brandy the dog. Then we went to live in Suffolk for six months where I was able to do quite extensive research um, in Cambridgeshire and Suffolk of our ancestors. So I've been back since 2006, I've been there 2008 and 10 and 14 and 17 and it could be 18 and 19. 19, 2019 was the last visit due to no longer having a vehicle. Um, but I do wish to go back because I normally go visit Bar Green at least every three or four years and I place flowers on the graves and everything and like to go and visit the area again. There's so much I'd like to do to revisit but when you are without wheels, if you like, you cannot get a bus to some of these remote villages. So you do need your own transport, really. Um, but I've recorded loads and loads of stuff. I mean, I've progressed from audio cassette tapes, now known as audio pods. I've progressed to a Sony video recorder. Um, much improved quality and everything, but these are very important tapes these early ones Despite being extremely crackly and they're very very crude. I know at times very very basic, but they are a record in time They are um, Moments in time that you know, I can't relive it exactly like like in those early days the early days when you're first discovering everything for most of my life, I even didn't even know about Borough Green. Didn't even know about the Oak Ancestors. So it's been extremely rewarding visiting these places. Many places I've done, and I've been I go back as much as I can, which isn't very often now. And I'm really grateful for having all my tapes, videos, which are shared online, on YouTube, on Facebook, on other places where um, and, and all over the world actually and people through contacts with my DNA in all in countries of the world like America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and other places we share information and these images and audios are like gold dust to people who can't get here who can't actually walk in the footsteps of the ancestors so this is very important, but th it's, the quality is not very good, not in those early days. Plus I'm having to just shove the pictures down. The pictures are repeated quite a lot at the moment. Sometimes I will reshuffle them round. That's it for me. This is Sheila in 2024. Over and out.